Hey everybody, this is Mike with Mike Stark Helmet Minecraft Server, and today I'm going to be showing you a new plugin called Prism. Now, this is the first in a series of tutorial videos, and I'm going to show you how to use each uh, section, each component of Prism. Now, Prism, if you haven't heard, is a brand new grief rollback uh, protection system for bucket servers, and if I may say so, uh, it is a cut above all the others. Um, Prism does things that no other plugin has ever done. We've got additional features that none have. We have smarter rollback engine um, than others have, and honestly, it's a lot safer and, and more enjoyable, uh, at least to me, to use. So we're going to start today, and in the first video here, we're going to show you. I'm going to show you how to do lookup commands. I'm going to show you how to find out the information that you need using the lookup commands. In the next video, we'll talk about rollbacks, etc. So I've got a world here and somebody has come by and set a fire. Now the problem is I don't know who did it. I have a server I don't allow griefing so I need to figure out who did it. I need to be able to roll back um, exactly what they did and generally I want that to be uh, that rollback to be perfect. You know I don't want doors to come back um, as half doors. I don't want them in the wrong orientation. I want signs to come back with the text that they had. I want beds to come back with both parts. If somebody comes in and kills all my colored sheep, I want to be able to roll back the sheep. If they were babies, I want them to be babies. If they were colored, I want them to be colored. Prism handles all of this. So let's get started. This is just the lookup portion. So I've got a fire. There was a small fire here. You can tell that there's a missing tree. There's a few different ways that we can figure out what happened. Each of the three tools that Prism offers for information are geared towards different things. One is very specific, one is just in the general area around you, and one allows you to kind of look for whatever you want. So we're going to get started with a wand. Um, I'm going to type prism I, but I could also type prism wand I, and this is going to turn on a wand. Now what a wand does is when I click a block, it's going to search the database for information about that block, that coordinate. So this block has no history yet, but if I right click on the block underneath it, right clicking will actually look at the space that is on the side of the block that I just clicked on. So because you can't click on air, this is how we handle that. So I can see the environment burned a log, right? A burn. There was a fire here. Something burned the wild grass, the logs in this area. If I jump up there, there's, there's another burn. So by left clicking and right clicking on stuff, you can kind of figure out exactly what happened at that specific location. To turn off a wand, you can just repeat the command that you used to turn it on, or you can say prism wand off, just in case you forget which wand you've got. Now I can also use prism near. Prism near is going to show me information that has happened in a five block radius of where I am. This is pretty useful, especially when you get to a place and you're not quite sure what's happened. You can use that to figure out where you need to be looking. So Prism Near, you can see that it's got more than just one page of information. It's got 141 results spread over 29 pages. I can use Prism Page and a page number in order to paginate through those results. The radius that near uses is configurable, but if you want to change it at command time, you can always pass in something else like prism near 7, so it looks for anything within 7 blocks of my location. Now the next tool is prism L. Prism L allows you to look for things that are near you, but if you want, it allows you to override the max radius that prism usually enforces and look for something that happened anywhere. So we're going to do both. So Prism uses something called actions. Actions are uh, names of events that Prism tracks. Right now we track 46 different events that happen around the world. Whether they're player events, entity events, or just world events, we track those. You can turn off and on all 46, but when you look at the log, you'll see a list here, A colon decay, A colon burn. Now what this means is that the action that I want to be looking for matches. So I'm going to use decay, burn, decay, break, flow. There's 46 different ones. 
So in this area, I have some burn events, but I also have some leaf decay events. Now, that kind of is part of a relationship, and we'll talk about relationships later on with, with actions in more detail. But if I wanted to specifically look for all the burn events that happened here, I can say prism L, A burn. And what this is going to do is search within 10 blocks of me, that's the default, for all burn events. Now, there could be several different burn types. One of the things I want to show you is our list of actions. We have two sets. We have a long set, so every action has a name. These are all 46. But we also have an alias set. So we've got just burn instead of block burn. We've got break instead of block break. Now these action aliases could actually mean different things, and that's what forms some families, some action families. And we'll talk about that again later. But for now, I'm focusing on burn. So let's say prism L A burn. So there have been 241 burn events near me. Let's say decay. There have been uh, six mm. results of decayed leaves, not that many. Now the things that we pass to the lookup command or the rollback command or the restore command, we call these parameters. They usually have a letter and a colon. So you've seen one, you've seen a colon. But there are other ones. There are uh, R colon, and this is a radius. If I wanted to change my radius to 30, I can look for all leaf decays within 30 blocks. There's a lot more. We also have B. I could provide a block number, um, say 2. I could say a gra you know, the, the block name like grass. If it's an entity, I could say sheep, cow, creeper, what have you. If it was a player, I could say P and then a player name. So let me show you a, an example. First of all, we need to figure out who actually set this fire. So I can say prism L for lookup. Um, and I'll show you my player name. Now you can see what I did. I set a fire. I placed the fire. But naturally, when you show up to a grief, you don't know who did it. So we need to look for the event to figure out who caused it. Now when somebody uses flint and steel, it shows up as A lighter. So I can say prism A lighter. There are two actions that happened right here within five, well, within 10 blocks of me. Vive Lois set a fire. It shows the date, the time, what happened. Now we know who did it. So you know who did it. You kind of know what happened. If it wasn't a burn, it could have been a break, etc. You can use this information to then roll this back. So we've got the information. Now one of the things that Prism also supports is if you do LR global. This is going to allow you to do a global database search. It's not limited to your location. For safety reasons, we always enforce a radius. You don't want to accidentally look, you know, for things that have happened in other worlds. You don't want to look for things that have happened way far away. And when you're rolling back, you especially don't want to roll back more than just what's, you know, near you. Um, with other plugins, you can make a typo and accidentally roll back two days worth of stuff. So we can use R global. Now this is going to do a search. It's going to do. Um, let me uh, let me grab a chest here. Where's a chest? So let's say a player comes on your server and they go out in the world and they place a chest. Then they come to you. Hey, I uh, I forgot to set a home. Can you please help me find your chat? My chest. Normally you'd say, I have no idea where you placed your chest. There could be infinite locations. So how do you figure this out? Well, first of all, you could say prism look action place. Right? You could give the player. You can use R global. If you're looking for something very specific, you can even pass in the block ID like chest. So it'll take a moment because it's scanning the entire database, but it's looking for what happened. So I recently placed a chest, the date and time, but it also gives me this ID. If you wanted to go to that location, you can say prism TP 228-9296. What that's going to do is teleport you from where you are to where that last action occurred. Now that ID will only show when you're doing a global search only because you typically don't need to teleport when it's nearby. 
So another thing that uh, Prism supports is, and this is supported for lookups and rollbacks and restores, is WE. Now WE stands for World Edit. So if I had World Edit installed, right, we can make a selection there, we can come up here and make a selection there. Let's say in this grid we want to be able to make, uh, we want to do a search but just within that grid. So I can say prism lookup, radius we, that, re that refers to the actual world edit selection. And again, that cannot ex uh, expand beyond the, the radius maximums you've configured. So I can say prism L R we, and I can look for a specific action, let's say burn. So within that selection, there are 167 results. Now the great thing about that is if I'm doing a rollback, I can use the exact same world edit selection. I can only roll back what happened there. So that pretty much sums up the, the lookup tools. The parameters are extremely flexible, and I really want you to be able to download Prism and, and play with it yourself. With 46 different events that we can track, you can really find very specific information about what happened where. So skip ahead. The next video is uh, going to cover rollbacks and restores. Thanks for watching.